In this video, we are going to learn about a feature called Network Packet Broker, specifically related to Palo Alto. Um, and this is a new feature that is introduced in Palo Alto version 10.1. Let's get started. So this is the agenda for this session. Why do we need this feature? And what is the feature overview? And what are the requirements to configure this feature? And what are the components involved in this feature? In fact, we're not going to discuss about the requirements because it definitely will change time to time. So it's best, it's best to refer the vendor document to understand what is the current requirement, like what are the current hardware requirements, software requirements, and licensing requirements. So I'll just skip that part alone. So the why factor, why do we need this feature? Before we learn about any feature, it's always best to understand why the feature came in first place. For example, uh, when there is OSPF, why did we bring BGP? So that level of understanding or learning will give more detailed information about the particular feature. So let's get started. How the traditional firewall works. Traditionally, firewalls used to allow or deny the traffic based on the port number. We write security policy to, to permit a certain port number, for example, port 80 and 443, if you want to permit web browsing and block all other traffic. But what is the challenge with this method? For example, if a torrent application uses port 80, it will be permitted because we are allowing web browsing based on the port 80. So the firewalls lacked a, um, the ability to identify what exactly the application is. And that's when the next gen firewalls came in where instead of writing policies based on the port numbers alone or even port and IP pairs, we can now write policies based on the application. The application can be uh, web browsing can be categorized as an application. Um, you can even have more granular applications like uh, uh, Facebook or Facebook chat, Facebook games, WhatsApp or Play Store. Um, so all these things can be classified as an application and we can either allow or deny the traffic to these applications. That's how the next gen firewalls function as opposed to the traditional firewalls. And then the third concept or component we are going to discuss is IPS. So now that we are writing policies based on the application, there is another challenge where, uh, what if there is some um, intrusion happening on the network, like a DOS attack or um, an antivirus, um, uh, or sorry, not antivirus, I mean, bomb virus attack or spyware attack or, um, so all and or if you want to uh, block some specific URL categories, so all these things are um, done by the device called intrusion prevention system device. So this device will block all this unwanted traffic. So typically we deploy this device in line um, ahead of the firewall or behind the firewall so that the traffic will pass through the device and this device will give a verdict whether to permit or deny the traffic. But luckily, nowadays, all the next-gen firewall, uh, firewalls has this IPS also integrated to it so that you don't need a separate device to be installed on your premises. Now comes the why factor. Why do we need this network packet broker concept? What if you are not satisfied or happy with only one vendor verdict saying that whether the traffic can be permitted or not, there's no uh, virus in this particular file or there's no intrusion happening. What if you want multi-vendor verdict? That's when the challenge is. Maybe you can deploy multiple vendor devices in a daisy chain fashion, like one after other, and you can let the traffic pass through all the devices and get a collective verdict at the end whether the traffic can be de denied or permitted. But the challenge here is, what if one of the device fails? The entire traffic flow is going to fail. Or what if you don't want to send all the traffic over all, all the devices, only web traffic you want to send over all the devices, the rest of the traffic you don't want to inspect at all in the through other vendor devices. So it's going to make a lot of configuration challenges if you want to implement it this way. So that's how, uh, that's why the, the network packet broker functionality comes in. So what is the network packet broker? 
So in this diagram, if you see here, when the client tries to access internet on the top, the traffic will come to the switch and the switch will forward the traffic to the firewall and firewall will send it to the internet. Of course, after NAT. And the return traffic will also come back to the firewall and firewall will send the traffic back to the client. That's how the normal client to server traffic flow happens. With the help of network packet broker, there are two additional um, components here. Number one is the broker interfaces. Um, number two, the network packet broker, which is the firewall itself. And then number three, sorry, three. Uh, number three is the security chain. Security chain is nothing but the list of devices, the IPS devices, where you want the traffic to go through before the traffic goes either from south to north or north to south. So let's understand how this works in detail. So what are the components involved in this? Number one, the network packet broker, which is the firewall itself. Number two, the security chain, the one which you see on the right hand side. So chain of security IPS devices. So that, that those devices can be deployed in two modes, either layer one mode or layer two mode, sorry, layer three mode. And they can also deploy it in unidirectional mode or bidirectional mode. So let's discuss about what is this layer one, layer three, unidirectional and bidirectional modes. So this is layer one bidirectional security chain. So if you see here, the traffic from the client um, comes to the firewall and the firewall, instead of sending the traffic directly to the internet, it is going to send the traffic through the security chain devices. So in this case, these devices are deployed in layer one mode. So none of them have any IP address assigned and the broker interfaces, which is interface one slash one and one slash two, they have the IP addresses configured. So when the traffic comes to the firewall, firewall will send the traffic out of the broker interfaces. It will go through the chain of security devices and the, the last packet, uh, I mean, the, the packet will come back to the firewall through the other interfaces, other interface, and then we'll send it to the, the server. So what is bidirectional security chain? In bidirectional security chain, the client to server traffic will go out of one interface. In this example, interface one slash one, and the server to client traffic will go to the security chain on the second interface, which is interface one slash two in this example. So the client to server traffic will hit the firewall. Firewall will send the traffic out of interface one slash one, and it will go to device one, and device one will send it to device, it'll do the inspection and then send it to device two, and then device three, and then device N, and the device N will send the traffic back to interface one slash two, and the traffic will go to the server. This is bidirectional security chain client to server flow. And similarly, when the traffic comes from the server, the traffic will hit the firewall and firewall will send it out of interface one slash two, not the interface one slash one. So now the traffic will go in reverse direction. So it will first hit device N and then device three, two, one, and then it will come back on interface one slash one, and then it will reach the client. That is bidirectional. So in terms of bidirectional, the client to server and server to client will go on different interfaces. And if it is a unidirectional, there is going to be uh, both client and server traffic will go out of a single interface. In this example, when the traffic comes from either client or server, it will be sent out of one slash one towards the chain and after the, all the after passing through all the devices, the traffic will come back to the firewall on interface one slash two. So that is going to be the same flow for both client to server and server to client traffic. That's all about the layer one security chain. And then let's discuss about layer three security chain. So in layer three security chain, so the first example we are going to look at is the bidirectional security chain. As you already know, bidirectional security chain means the client to server and server to client traffic will go on different interfaces, not on the same interface. So if you see this example, probably let's, let's look into this example first and then we'll go to the bidirectional security flow, how it works. So in layer three, unidirectional security flow, when the traffic comes from the client, hits the firewall, after the firewall policy lookup and everything, the traffic will be sent out of interface one slash one with the next stop IP address of 10.0.0.2, which is device one. 
Now the device one will have a default gateway pointing to 10, 10, 10, 4, which is device two. Sorry, the first IP was 10, 10, 10, 2, not 10, 0, 0, 2. So the device one will send the traffic to 10, 10, 10, 4, because that's how the default gateway is configured. So it will come to device two and then device N, and the device N will have a default gateway pointing back to the firewalls interface one slash two. So this is going to be the flow for both client to server, or in other words, south to north, or server to client, or in other words, north to south traffic. So same flow for both the traffic. That is layer three unidirectional security flow. Now, if we look at layer three bidirectional security security chain, the client to server traffic will come to the firewall and firewall will have a routing entry, probably a default route or pointing to, well, actually firewall will not have a routing entry. It will have a policy to send the traffic to security chain. So the firewall will send the traffic since it's a client to server traffic, it is going to forward the traffic out of interface one slash one to device one. Now, if you see on the right hand side, the device one has a default route pointing to second sec second device on the security chain. And since it's a internet traffic, we are going to hit the default route, the second line entry in the routing table, and the traffic will come to device two. And device two will again do a route lookup after the inspection, and it will have a default route pointing to device n in this example and the traffic will come to device n and device n has a default route pointing to interface one slash two so the traffic will come back to the firewall and it will reach the server when the traffic comes back from the server it will hit the firewall and firewall will send the traffic to device n in this example um, and the device n will have a route lookup and since the client ip is 10 192.168.10.2 2, it's going to send the traffic to device two based on the next stop and device two will send it to device one and device one will send the traffic back to the firewall and firewall will send the traffic to the client. So that is how the layer three bidirectional security chain works and layer three unidirectional security, security chain works. So let's have a very quick review about um, uh, network packet broker. So network packet broker is a device that helps us achieve multi-vendor packet inspection without having them connected in a DC chain fashion. So in this example, for example, if one of the one of the IPS device fails, we can configure the firewall to not to forward the traffic. Like we can even do health monitoring on the broker interfaces. Like it can even be an ICMP monitoring or HTTP monitoring. And if in case, if there is no response for the health monitoring, we can configure the firewall to either drop the traffic or bypass the security chain and forward it directly. So that this way we are avoiding the problem of uh, having these devices in DC chain and one device having a failure and uh, blocking the entire communication. So that's all about this feature guys. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment. And I'm sorry, this is my first ever video. And if there is anything wrong, or if you want to pass some comments, feel free to pass it on me. Thank you.